I'm going to have a little go at drawing a red blood cell here. And I'm a terrible drawer, so it's probably going to be shocking. So here's my red blood cell. It's got a little kind of hollow in the middle. It's not... Uh, it's, <laughs> let's be honest, it's not very good, is it? Let me label it a red blood cell. Now, these are some absolutely fascinating structures in the human body. Why? First of all, along with our uh, cell fragments of, uh, of platelets and white blood cells, for example, they are formed in the bone marrow and you lot probably studied all the stem cell stuff and bone marrow stuff in your GCC biology maybe even in the A level biology but that's where these things are made secondly they are this is just by way of an introduction by the way they are the exact diameter of a capillary so these little fellas squeeze down a capillary exactly to fit exactly to scale now this is my favorite fact of all these tiny seven micrometers wide cells, they contain, can, or it contains millions of HB. And of course, HB, nothing to do with pencils, is hemoglobin. So this seven micrometer tiny little cell doesn't even have human DNA in it. This, this tiny cell absolutely contains millions of hemoglobin proteins, okay? So that, in my opinion, is already fascinating. And the point I really want to get across here is that these HB that I've just referred to, these are, of course, hemoglobin. Hemoglobin. By the way, the um, the A after the H is uh, is optional. We write it in the UK version of hemoglobin. In the US version, it's not there. And I just want to stress that this is an iron-containing pigment. Okay, iron-containing pigment. So well, that's one of the reasons why we need that iron as one of our minerals. And they are proteins, and again, you guys who are studying biology, of biology, you'll know that the importance of proteins in the human body. But this is the point I really want to get to. Let's take our HB. Of course, we've got millions of them on each blood cell. What we're going to do is we're going to add to that HB. We're going to add a little bit of oxygen, which I'm going to do in this kind of pinky color. Now, what that ultimately becomes in the blood, of course, is we have, which colors did I choose? I think it was HB. <laughs> I don't know if I've got the same pink O2. I don't think it is, is it? Yeah, they all do. So we've got this sort of binding process of hemoglobin plus oxygen becoming, and I'll just name this for you, let me do it this way. This is actually called oxyhemoglobin, okay? So not surprisingly, this substance over here is called oxyhemoglobin. Now, it's a specialist structure, and the reason it's important is because it can carry oxygen. So effectively, this is all about oxygen carriage. So in the blood, let's say we we just passed the blood has just passed maybe uh, the lungs and is now going back to the heart in the pulmonary vein. We would expect something like ninety seven percent of all oxygen is bound to hemoglobin, and of course is subsequently going to be delivered to places like, for example, the muscle. So we um, and if you want to know where the other percent, the other three percent is, three percent of oxygen is dissolved in plasma. Okay, three percent dissolved. So we've got the vast majority of oxygen being carried through the vascular system, through the circulatory system, to, let's say, the muscle, and that is being carried by the haemoglobin. Now, the other point I would make to you as well is that haemoglobin is also capable of carrying carbon dioxide. It doesn't take as much carbon dioxide, but it can form something called carbamina haemoglobin on its return back to the heart, let's say, after the muscle. Now, once this is delivered down to this HbO2, is delivered down to the muscle, it needs to be sort of extracted, or the oxygen does, and then it binds with something called MB. And MB is what we call myoglobin. Now, myo, this little prefix here, this means muscle. Okay, so, um, sorry, that's, that's actually not the case. It means cell, okay? <laughs> Sarco is muscle. Now, here we go. We're going to say that myoglobin is in the cells and it stores oxygen in the cell itself. Also, really important myoglobin has a higher affinity it has a higher affinity to o2 than hemoglobin so as a result when this oxyhemoglobin arrives at let's say a muscle tissue the myoglobin on the other side of the partially permeable membrane remember in gcse biology studies there what's going to happen here is that the oxygen is going to prefer to be on the myoglobin it's going to disassociate from the oxygen uh, from the hemoglobin and form oxymyoglobin. So I just want to give you the equivalent kind of um, equation here. If we've got MB in the muscle, and we've got plus oxygen, that was meant to be a different color, plus oxygen, 
that is <laughs> oh, my feet so bad with colours. Plus our oxygen, that is going to become MbO2. Let me choose my colours. MbO2. In other words, it's going to become oxymyoglobin. So let me write this in for you. Oxymyoglobin. I did that the wrong way around, right? I think I did it the wrong way around above as well. I hope you let me just be let me just be consistently crap. There you go. I've got my colours the wrong way around, but you get you get the point I'm trying to make. Now, why is this structure important? Well, it's important for the following reasons. It provides a quick release of oxygen in the muscle, let's say, or any cell for that matter. So we've effectively got a store of oxygen there, and that of course is to prevent delay. Okay, so we've got this prevention of delay. And so what we find is that we have larger stores of MB in SO fibers, in slow oxidative fibers. Our slow twitch type ones, our slow oxidative fibers, they will tend to have more myoglobin in them. But the point I'm trying to make here is that hemoglobin binds with oxygen in the blood. Typically, obviously, that's going to be the first point of contact is around the alveolus. It's then delivered via the circuitry network down to, let's say, the muscle tissue, but it's then picked up by myoglobin, which has a higher affinity, becomes oxymyoglobin. And ultimately, if you guys reflect on all the things you've learned about these processes, aerobic respiration, where does that oxymyoglobin take the oxygen? It takes it to the mitochondria. But why? Because that is the site of all aerobic respiration. So the other thing you can think about with your my oxymyoglobin is it literally delivers oxygen to the specific organelle of the mitochondria where aerobic respiration and aerobic energy release can occur. Thank you.